the rape of the lock as a satire on women paragraph number 1 introduction pope has been regarded almost unanimously as the most outstanding poet of his age he reflected his contemporary society quite realistically in all its varied aspects his rape of the lock is most representative example of it apart from the aspects of the contemporary society the presumed depravity of female sex receives a graphic description in this poem the rape of the lock as such highlights the moral descendants of the society in general and the frivolous femininity in particular and pope tries to achieve this through the character of belinda the main figure of the poem all the belinda's character is highly complex it appears to us as a goddess of beauty and charmer of human hearts but it is essentially the idleness the artificiality the fashions the ambitions the manners the aspirations the emptiness the meanness the vanity the jealous the intrigues and the moral levity to which the young ladies of the contemporary society had scummed have been essentially focused through her paragraph number 2 outset of the poem at the very outset of the poem we are acquainted with the idleness late rising and fondness for the domestic pets of the aristocratic ladies of the 18th century england brenda wakes up at noon and falls asleep again to keep dreaming about her lovers and how to flirt them all these were obviously not the ideal standards these ladies were up to paragraph number 3 artificiality of the ladies we are also informed in the very beginning of the poem about the artificiality of the ladies who loved gilded chariots the poem points out very skillfully the coquetry the sham and the different vanities of the time the ladies learned early in their lives how to roll their eyes and to blush in an affected manner their hearts were like toy shops which moved from one gallant to another this clearly shows that the manners of the ladies of the time were quite artificial they know the art of lisping hanging their heads aside and fainting into airs these ladies used to sink on their rich quilts and pretended sickness so that their lovers and admirers may come to inquire after their health and in this way have a chance to show their rich attires which the ladies were wearing paragraph number 4 marriage wishes the ladies have almost an obsession to get married with someone who is quite well off and enjoys a high status in the society for this the ladies would do everything to attract their attention pope seems to be ridiculing this extravagant aspiration of ladies who imagined matrimonial alliance not with the ordinary people but with dukes and peers only paragraph number 5 love letters and flirtation the women of the time felt glad to receive love letters from their worshipers when belinda at last gets up from her bed her eyes rest open on a love letter couched in the conventional language of this topic the ladies were fond of outdoor enjoyments too here many ladies would exhibit their charms and win the hearts of the young lovers here they would also play the game of ombre which was nothing but a game of flirtation paragraph number 
पैराग्राफ नंबर सिक्स लव फॉर कॉस्मेटिक्स The aristocratic ladies treated cosmetics as their main concern. Before embarking on her decorating operation, Belinda offers a prayer to the cosmetic powers. At her dressing table are the various offerings of the world: Lodia's glowing gems, Arabia's perfumes, speckled and white combs, files of pins to curl their hair. The poet seems to be ridiculing the woman's excessive concern for self-embellishment and self-decoration. Para Simon, jealousy. Pope seems to be investigating the psychological realities of women also in matters of rivalry. Women have been jealous of one another from the time immemorial Clarissa secretly hands over a pair of scissors to Baron in order to assist him in his bad designs It is in all probability Clarissa's jealousy of Belinda's beauty and fame that prompts her to offer this assistance to Baron paragraph number 8 no moral scruples pope wants to point out quite explicitly that the ladies of the time had no moral scruples real honor had no meaning for them yet reputation was considered to be more important the loss of chastity does not matter if the loss of reputation is avoided several pages in the poem suggest a kind of moral disarray in the society for instance a frail china jar receiving a crack is equated with a lady's losing of her chastity a lady's staining of her new brocade is more serious than staining her chastity a lady's missing a dance party is more serious than forgetting the prayers the death of a lap dog or the breaking of rich china vase is as serious a matter as is the death of her husband melinda's lament over her love affair is a sheer hypocrisy melinda loves the baron at heart but she rebukes him outwardly it appears that there is a complete confusion of values among the ladies paragraph number 9 pope's criticism it will not be irrelevant to point out that pope's criticism was not negative he instructs and advises to for the cure of the moral degeneration of his age the poem has a definite moral purpose and this constitutes the constructive aspect of pope's criticism of life clarissa's speech is oriented with this purpose in view she is the mouthpiece of the poet when she gives direction to the ladies of the time pope seems to preach good manners simplicity sincerity reality and good sense in life paragraph number 10 Pope's bias and prejudice. According to one point of view, Pope was not happy in his experiences with women. He was a small and sickly person, as such, could not expect to win the love and respect of any worthy woman. It is maintained that he made a proposal to marry Wastley, but she rejected him. as such he felt insulted and therefore had a grudge against the fair sex it is quite possible that in the rape of the lock he gave expression to his personal feelings against the aristocratic women of his time yet there is a lot which is true as far as women are concerned pope cannot be held responsible for being entirely biased and prejudiced against women
the rape of the lock as a satire on women last paragraph conclusion but in conclusion we can maintain that pope had a special genius for observing feminine weaknesses on top of all the power of observation and the gift with which he described the female weakness in words and phrases are undoubtedly superb no one has so minutely and comprehensively exposed the affectations of the female sex as did pope in the 18th century in the rape of the lock thank you